I always try to do a pretest or a gap analysis to see what is the reluctance because it's been out mm. there for a while. Um, and that way, you know how to educate our surgeons and our staff. I make sure that there is evidence-based substantial resources within the last five years, because I could bring a resource paper to one of the docs that's 20 years old and he's going, well, you know, has anybody really ever proved this? Mm -hmm. the, the other thing is I never force product. And most companies mm -hmm. are very aggressive. It's not ex that expensive. I think a, a Bovee pencil is $22 and a linear cutter is $600, okay? Mm -hmm. Not that one is more important than the other. And, and the corrugated tubing they use to connect to the machine is $5. So mm -hmm. I do a, what they call a tabletop. I don't force product evaluation on our surgeons because okay. you go in a room and they've never seen this and they go, what the heck? I'm trying to do surgery here, guys. <laughs> And then I so make is sure it the products themselves that that eliminate that smoke then, or is it localized vents, like you said, or is it a combination of both? It's a combination of both. You have a local exhaust ventilation, which is a machine that filters down to the 0.1 microns and then has what, what they say, mm -hmm. what we call a cubic foot per minute pull of up to 70 where wall suction is only five. So you got to have that pull. You got to pull it out of the way. Not nice. only filter it down, but you got to pull it out of the way. Then mm -hmm. you got to have uh, disposable devices that connect to it that capture the smoke. And sure. there's something as simple as, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen anesthesia tubing. It's about one and a half inch diameter and corrugated. And that creates what we call a vortex for removal. But you mm -hmm. also have smoke evacuation capture devices on the Bovee pencil. Okay. Uh, or you have a uh, telescoping um, connectors to the Bowie pencil. So it gets right at the site. Well, okay. the, that's the doctor's pencil. That's their, that's their um, surgical device that they use. Right. And I can't tell them what they're comfortable with or what. Yeah. They're, they're not, not going to give that up easily. Yeah. No. So we let them choose. And by doing that, we set a tabletop up and that tabletop helps them play with a lot of this stuff before they use it on a patient. Then we did something kind of creative. Um, we had hooked up like a 0.1 micron. Remember these viruses and particulates are very small. Mm -hmm. And we put these inline filters between the wall suction and our suction canister. Now, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it captures the virus because the flow of the wall suction is only at five cubic foot per minute. But doing mm -hmm. that, we can at least, in like you said, when in ICU, when you're doing GI cases where you get small puff of smoke, it will capture that. Okay. And, and then when you get everybody on board with all this education, we set a go live date and that's what we did. And then we monitored the practice and then we post tested them again. We said it's not a pass or fail, but you could see a significant difference when the education was delivered. And after we've done all that and people get comfortable with it, then we write a policy so we know we can adhere to that policy. But I see. this formula is what I've used in all five hospitals where I've gone smoke free. And That's it's amazing. Worked. Yeah. So you, so then you're not seeing, you know, harmful effects of smoke in the OR anymore when these when these policies are in place when you have this combination of devices well, and localized. Exactly. Anytime you change culture or practice, you got to monitor for compliance, no matter what mm -hmm. service line you're in. So it, the ball doesn't stop it implementation. Mm -hmm. um, you got to change that culture because yeah. let's say, not that I'm leaving, but if I left my institution and somebody did not keep the ball going with that culture or instill or hardwire, then they're going to go right back to start. Somebody's yeah. not a new person comes in. They're not going to open it up. And so you, you, you've got to change that practice. And a, and a good example is when I was at Gwinnett hospital system, I was there about 24 years. We were smoke free long before. I think we were pioneers in, in smoke. And they even got to the point where the surgeons that I was used to working with goes, where, where's my smoke evacuator? And now I haven't been at Gwinnett in almost 15 <laughs> years and they're back to, they're back to start again because nobody has oh, supported no. the practice. So now they're going back because they got new doctors, new staff, you know, that happens. Yeah. yeah and right. they're, they're trying to implement a practice change that was already there over 25 years ago. Mm, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Well, I'm glad that they're, they're full circle. Back, <laughs> I know so. it does, <laughs> but we're hoping that it becomes just like ergonomics and yeah. PPE, that it becomes part of the practice of surgery, just like a bovie yeah. and a surgical table and instruments. Yeah, it is so true. You know, these ergonomic things and, you know, these things in practice, we just have to identify them, you know, and it's somebody has to say, 
I don't think this is healthy for the staff. I think that we probably need to change this. Like now we have hover mats that can, yep. you know, just glide 350 pound patients. You know, I know. I do that. Um, just, I mean, I think you need three people technically to do that, but it, that makes them like 50 pounds. You know? Oh yeah. And, and you couldn't move patients before. So it's kind of the same concept. Yeah. It, it, that was a culture change. And now a nurse or transporter wouldn't even begin to move a 350 pound patient without some type of, of moving device. Right. Um, yeah. Right. That's very true. Going back to, um, I guess the accessibility of the, of these devices to make, uh, you know, procedure areas smoke free. I'm thinking of these times where endoscopy or GI has to do a road trip to a room. How accessible is it to bring those materials to, you know, on a road trip per se? Mm -hmm. That that's a great question. Um, you have different magnitudes of smoke that we said. You can have a little mm -hmm. bit exposure, but if you're supposed to all day long, seven days a week, it's still cumulative. It doesn't matter. <laughs>